from Galvanize, San Francisco. Expecting a signal from the noise. It's the Cube covering the Apache Spark community event. Brought to you by IBM. Now your hosts, John Furry and George Gilbert. Okay, welcome back everyone. This is the Cube special presentation along with IBM and the Spark Summit community going on here. Live in San Francisco is the Cube's special IBM Spark community event here, live in San Francisco at the Galvanize Incubator workspace. A lot of developer space here, all the people programming. I'm John Furrier, my co-host George Gilbert, big data analyst at wikibon.org. Big special uh, thing happening in San Francisco this week around Spark Summit, IBM's big announcement around their commitment. Billions of dollars, that's my words, there's no official announcement, Bill, I'm just kind of connecting the dots, but a lot of investment in a technology called Spark. Here to explain it is Beth Smith, General Manager of the Analytics Platform. Welcome to the Cube special presentation of the Spark community uh, event here in San Francisco. So, I got to ask you, explain to us, I mean, we know why, I want the uh, audience to see that is, Spark is this little thing that's kind of developing. It's like out of Berkeley, that's where the operating system world started in the 80s, started a whole systems movement around Unix and Linux. Again, Berkeley is the center point of all the action. Mm -hmm. In comes IBM and just creates this huge floodlight of attention onto Spark. Big commitment from the top down senior management on this Spark technology. It's around big data. Explain what this is, why such a huge, and the world's responding, so everyone wants to know, explain to us, why now, what's this all about? So I think it actually starts with the fact that the decade, and maybe even we would say the century, is defined by data and analytics and the insight from it. That's why we call it the insight economy. Spark is the analytics operating system for that, to just unlock that value. Why, why Spark now? I mean, some people say it's not ready, but is it, well, I mean, everyone that I talk to certainly is, is like, salivating over getting their hands on Spark, making it go faster. Certainly at Hadoop Summit last week, we were live all week, and those sessions were packed. Is it, it's like a new engine. It's just like, it speeds things up. Is that kind of what it's all about? And you guys just kind of like, hey, you saw that, and you're gonna throttle the acceleration faster? Is that the purpose? I mean, give us some more insight into around the, the, the accelerant and all these resources. Why, why so much? So of course it does um, deal with some challenges that the Hadoop stack has had and is good for the Hadoop and HDFS world, but it's much broader than that. It's really about having a universal access to data to again, get intelligence into applications and systems all the way from popular applications to the internet of things. You know, we love open source. You know, I remember uh, the Open Compute two years ago mm -hmm. was a data center conference. You know, Facebook donated reference designs. Even Azure came in and donated all these, all these reference. And then it was like, oh my God, they're giving away their, their core jewels. And as it turns out, that was a major advantage because now the community has some stuff to work with. Talk about what you guys are doing, what you're donating to the Spark community. You guys are bringing some intellectual property from behind the closet at IBM's core labs into the community. What is that and why are you doing that and what's the impact? So there's really three elements to what you end up doing. It's the technology, it's skills, and it's the overall community. And so from a technology standpoint, we're donating um, game-changing technology, system ML, that will really open up the opportunity for more data scientists and data developers to build applications. So we're seeing here at Galvanize in San Francisco a lot of training sessions, people are mm -hmm. learning. Um, you guys are putting, what, 3,000 plus researchers and data scientists on the case, office in San Francisco, and then you're gonna be doing a series of trainings. Can you collaborate more on that? Yeah, so we've committed to um, train, help educate a million data scientists, data engineers around the world on Spark and the surrounding concepts. You know, one of the things, God, George, when I just wanted to key back into something you said mm -hmm. uh, a moment ago, Beth, about um, Spark as the analytics operating system and that um, data is the competitive advantage to transform industries. So what specifically about Spark now makes that possible relative to a relatively rich set of ecos a rich ecosystem of analytic capabilities that's out there now? Well, we all know that data is the next natural resource. And so to be able to fuel the intelligence in applications, it's about unlocking insights from that data. Spark brings the ability to access universal data, not just what's in Hadoop, but data from all different sources, and we can see that expanding out even more. That, along with its unified programming model, just gives the power to go into a number of things that aren't just relegated to batch, which we see with Hadoop. Can you talk about 
some of the um, applications like commerce, um, perhaps WebSphere, that you would see Spark plugging into. Um, in other words, not just the ecosystem of other application vendors and middleware vendors, but IBM's products and how it would plug in. So, you know, as John referenced a few minutes ago, we've actually committed 3,500 researchers and developers to bring the value of Spark into our analytics platform, into our commerce platform, and to be leveraged as a part of our business solutions that we take to market. Okay. So, I mean, I want to talk about this analytic operating system concept you were um, alluding to. That's new. I mean, so what does that mean, I mean, specifically? Is that just... Um, an application-centric framework. So how do you guys talk about that? Because, I mean, I love that. I love that. Anything operating system, I love. But analytics is hot, and it seems like at Hadoop Summit, again, last week, we were speculating and talking about what the trend was, and it was as if, you know, the cloud DevOps world was waiting for the killer app, you know, and that's analytics, right? So you get the DevOps world looking at the analytics trend and saying, hey, I can power faster analytics, so what is that uh, analytics operating system? Is it just app-centric? Is it going to talk to DevOps? Can you, because you got Bluemix in there. So it's like, it seems to be <laughs> stacked up uh, horizontally across a lot of different IBM groups. Is it designed that way, or what does that, and what does that mean? Am I reading into it too, uh, <laughs> too much? So, you know, we've seen for years that an operating system um, kind of brings the nervous system to workloads and systems take the same analogy and apply it to analytics. So yes, is it connected cl cloud? Of course it is. You know, we have a, um, a Spark as a service uh, available in beta on Bluemix so that developers can now pull that into their applications that they'll be using. But we'll have a number of different places where Spark shows up. Mm -hmm. And it just comes back down to this point of an operating system, I would say is like that nervous system. It gives you the capability that you need. It's an underpinning for solutions above it. Share some color on the on the commitment, because again, I want to deep. I want to kind of understand the, the level of crater or impact this is having on this community, because it's growing. You guys now just opened up even more range for Spark. What is the main announcement? Can you just give some color to Apache Spark, IBM's commitment, and what it means? I mean, obviously the, the research and stuff, but like, you know, for someone out there watching, a CIO or developer, and you know, what's really going on? Well, we have a long-term um, history of supporting open source. You all know that, yeah. you know, and if we think about the decade of e-commerce um, and e-business and some of the things that we did around WebSphere and again with Apache, that was a key um, uh, support then and, and contribution we had. And now if you think about this being, like I said, the decade of data and analytics and how you're going to get those insights, then it's about, okay, a community around that. And we are very much committed to community, and open source becomes a part of it. And so as a part of these announcements, it's about IP contribution, it's about skills and training people, and it's about our own people being a part of the community as well. I think that's wonderful. I think the IP is key. And the other thing that's kind of like a – dancing around this whole announcement is that your role in founding member of the AMP Lab. You guys were one of the four founding members, I believe, at UC Berkeley's AMP Lab, which was only, you know, a few years ago, 2009, right? So, okay, so one of the things that's interesting about open source is it used to be open sources like this and, oh, big vendors, we don't want their fingerprints in here, but you guys have been there from the beginning and the world's changed now with open source. So what's different from open source years ago versus today? It's much more active and collaborative, it seems, but you guys are really successful with this as a founding member and now this announcement. So take us through what's it like now to execute as a company serving huge customer base. I mean, you have a huge customer base wants open source. So we have been an advocate of open source from the beginning, from the mid to late 90s. You know, we were, we were one of the first companies to really embrace what open source could be because at the end of the day, it's about innovation. And innovation comes from a community. And it's about then how do you unlock that business value and how do we get more people, more businesses around the world being able to benefit from that. I think Apache, too, we, we, we picked this up with talking to Hortonworks last week, is that Apache set up well for anyone to give you, not just if you work for a company. So right. companies are actually w operating well with an Apache. Does that make a big difference? Does the Apache governance model help there? Absolutely. And, you know, we've been a, a sponsor of Apache since the very beginning in 1999, I think it was. Okay. Um, keying off that, uh, and you, IBM alluded to this, I think, in the, the headline of the, the press release, uh, 
when, when IBM really got behind Linux in 1999, it's kind of like the world shifted on its axis a little bit. Do you see that happening again this time? And to the IT executive who's divorced from the, the data analyst, or I should say data scientist community that's a little, a little bit on the fringe to, from their attention, why is this platform now relevant way beyond data scientists? to the broader IT community? So the IT community is um, missioned, <laughs> challenged, right, to help provide the systems and technologies to let business unlock value from their data and to get their competitive advantage in how they transform themselves, how they transform their industry based on data. So this ties right hand in hand with that. The IT community needs to be able to support developers and the applications that developers need to create. I think the appeal to developers is a big one. And again, you brought up the point of customers. One of the things that ODP um, teases out at, Ho at Hadoop Summit last week was that there's a need for supported, stable code <laughs> to operationalize analytics. So I want to ask you that operational question. How do uh, you guys see the acceleration of what you're doing here? Take us forward down the road on operationalizing analytics because this is moving really fast and it's, baking out as fast as it can be baked out, but people are still integrating it into their products. So it's kind of the wild west with the Spark, if it will. So how do you guys get your arms around that and contribute in the open source as well as provide value to your customers? So we are in California. You know. <laughs> so um, uh, so it, like you mentioned though, it really is about um, innovation and it's about consistency um, and what clients can depend on and how they have different options. It's to enable clients to not be locked in to a particular vendor. And so it's different areas depending on whether or not you're talking about ODP and where its level of maturity is or what we're talking about now in the very early stages of the partnerships and innovations around Spark. Yeah, I love the, just to kind of come back to the Wild West thing, you mentioned California One, it's an investment in uh, San Francisco office is one of the big parts of the announcement. Wall Street Journal's headline is, IBM embraces Spark at Big Data's real-time frontier. So let's talk about real-time, because this is something that you guys are really plugged into, I know from doing the CUBE interviews, multiple events with IBM, real-time versus near real-time. Talk about that dynamic, because it is a frontier, it is a wild west, but there's some real value being extracted there, and it's changing the game with data science and programming. What's, what's that frontier about real-time? Well, that's one of the things that Spark unlocks, that Hadoop um, is more limited and that Spark really allows a closer to near real time, which in many cases may be all that the workload needs. That, along with some of the things that we can do around our streams technology, which really then does allow you to do analytics in real time and apply context of what you're learning, what those analytics are learning along the way. So it's a combination of data at rest and data in motion, and that comes back to how do you best leverage all the data you have. So I got to ask you kind of an internal IBM question. How does this change your world? Because now that the, the big resources are on it, the, the top execs, Jenny's going to be like, okay, where are we? <laughs> you guys got an execution plan behind this. It's not just donating some IP. You guys are going to be on the road. You're going to be educating a thousand data scientists. You have these huge developer focused things. Obviously that's going on across the company. But how does this change your world? Because this is now again the frontier. You selling picks and shovels for everyone. I mean, what's going on? How does it affect your, your plans? So, um, so clearly there's an IBM team behind it. It's not about me personally, but I do have the lead for IBM to execute this. And anybody that knows me well knows that I absolutely focus and that I work with a team on, okay, how do we accomplish what we set out to do? Um, and that's what we're definitely going to do here. And the million uh, educated numbers, is that, was that pulled out of the air? Is that a target? Is that going to be like the million developer march? Is there a cadence to that? Is that a specific milestone you're shooting for? That number or more, what's the uh, kind of? Well, we think that it's important to have an impact, right? And so that number represents an impact. And we already have work underway. We have, um, we're one of the biggest contributors to Big Data University MOOC. And as a part of that, we already have uh, 262,000 folks signed up on that. We now have Spark Fundamentals courses there, so that's a way to do it. And we're expanding that into Brazil and China. It's already in about five or seven different languages already, but we're going to have local ones for Brazil and China. Well, I asked the question because IBM doesn't just throw numbers out there, so I, I'm going to just kind of teasing out the next question, which is, does that change the total addressable market for data scientists? Because, like, you guys just don't pick a million numbers just because it sounds good. You, that you say a billion uh, scientists, but there aren't a billion data scientists yet. 
So that number must come from some sort of systematic targeting. I mean, is it, is it span the scope? Because if Spark continues to succeed, the definition of data science also changes. So give some context to that number. Is that like 20% of the market? Is it going to grow it? I mean, if this happens, it's a rising tide. So what's the behind the total number around the data science? Do you have any insight there you can share? Well, when you, when you think about data and the, it being that basis of competitive advantage, then it really is about having as many people in different companies around the world as possible that can unlock that. And that, I think, is what's at the heart of data scientists. So it's about growing the number of data scientists and data engineers as well, and the folks that really will be dealing with that level of analytics. You know, Beth, keying on that million number, there was a well-known McKinsey study a couple of years ago that you know, we're going to have a shortage of data scientists of, of X many hundreds of thousands, and you know, you're going to have to work with these organizations if you want to get around that. There's a movement to make tools more accessible, to make data science more accessible, just the way business intelligence tools did 10, 20 years ago. Is that something IBM's going to participate in, and is that part of the million number? you know, effort? Absolutely. In fact, we sponsored a hackathon over the weekend, and one of the tools that we brought to that was sort of like a workbench that the team had created to be just another tool to help enable those data scientists. So it's about education, it's about tools, it's about systems, it's about the entire end-to-end -end, um, story. Talk about the end-to-end -end thing, because you're talking about machine learning as a starting point. It's almost like, here, that's like, let's get the first grade, get going with the machine learning, and you build on the machine learning. That could go end-to-end. -end. Could you take us through the machine learning to the, well, I would say machine learning is for the developer, but then what's the other end of the spectrum when you say end-to-end? -end? Is that an embedded analytics? Is it uh, integrated? What does that end-to-end -end mean? Just as a solution, or is it a technology stack, or both? I would say it's both a solution and it's a technology stack. But let's start with solutions. Solutions are about how do you get business value. And that's where it's important to have intelligence built in to solutions, focused on the domain and the industry that the solution is aimed at. And then in order to do that, you think about the underlying technology that helps make that happen. So in my notes here, I have this, you know, um, software engineering, analytics for the future, design science. These are kinds of the things that are coming into the app developer world. It used to be like, hey, I bang out a software app, you know, load it up, web-based, then mobile comes on. A little bit more, more design goes into the native mobile app. Now when you add in analytics, you're having a whole other engine of real, near real-time or real-time capability. The design component goes in. Can you share some insight into how you guys see that vision? Because it's not just UI and UX design. Data now will impact UX. You have any, can you share any color on how that fits into the whole analytics piece? Absolutely. So, and, and we all know that design is not just about the, the UX. I mean, that's an element of it, no doubt about it, but design is a critical aspect of offerings and solutions, and it's about all aspects of what the design may be and the experience as a part of it. In fact, you know, I might argue that the developer of the future is probably going to be a blend of that application developer that we've traditionally known, plus a little bit of a data scientist, plus a little bit of a designer, because I think those things will blend together over time. And agile will change. That definition oh, absolutely. of agile with fast data will be interesting and That's contextually right. relevant, too. Absolutely. One follow-up question. When you were, uh, on, on John's question about uh, end-to-end -end solutions and tech stacks, and you had responded that the solution has business value and the underlying tech stack. So what are the tech stack elements that you would call out for you know, an IT person who's trying to wrap their head around this and say, okay, my platform, this analytic OS, has these components? So um, we're already leveraging Spark as a part of Big Insights for Apache Hadoop. We um, have work underway within the analytics, IBM Analytics Platform team, all the way from the uh, containers, information integration, governance, et cetera, to say how do we bring those concepts and technologies together. We have work underway with our systems team around um, power systems as well as System Z to say how do we optimize for this, but also how do we unlock the value of things that clients may be using in those environments as well. 
Beth, I want to just close out by just kind of tying it all together. So you guys certainly at IBM had a huge experience with the Watson brand, and that's just gotten great press. But there's a developer cloud, and just more recently, you guys have been looking at the integration. So internally at IBM, you've been kind of looking at this integration of data. So I got to ask you, I talk about the technology center here in San Francisco, 425 Market with the Amp Lab partnership, Databricks. Why San Francisco? Why not like in Chicago or somewhere else or New York? Why San Francisco? Why did you pick here? Is it because it's close to Berkeley? Is it more concentrated here? What's the rationale behind it? Well, you it? answered the question in, in, the, in the question because it is about here's where Amp Lab is, here's where Databricks is. And this is our Spark Technology Center. This is not the only place in IBM that will be working on Spark. In fact, we'll have across probably a dozen or more of our laboratories around the world people working on it. But this is the center of where we become a, a member of that community that's really shaping what this is about. Any other um, expansion behind Databricks and Berkeley? You guys obviously are open, so it's open source. It's not like it's just those guys. That's where today is. If you're going right. to do the million developer march and go out and train all these data scientists with all these resources, what's next? Is there other universities you're talking to, other places? Uh, Let's get through today, yeah. okay? <laughs> Yeah. But you guys so, probably had that on the radar, right? It's on the right. radar. Right, oh, absolutely. It's not, it's not I, just Berkeley or No, it's database. not, it's not. And in fact, we have partnerships with uh, Galvanize. Of course, they're not mm -hmm. just in San Francisco, even though they are here. And we have partnerships with MetaStream and DataCamp as a part of what we're doing with the education aspects. And so you'll see it expand out, but it just made sense for a Spark Technology Center, designers and engineers and data scientists that we're going to really be spending all of what they do in the community to be located here. I got to ask one final question because we got to wrap. Um, on the announcement, is there anything that surprised you? Because, I mean, I knew it was going to be big, but I didn't think it was going to be as big with the clippings and all the press coverage. What's the one thing that surprised you that's taken you back? Wow, this is big. So I was absolutely confident that this was a big move, um, and I'm glad to see that the world saw it that way. <laughs> Right on the plan. Beth, always focused here inside <laughs> the cube. Great to have you on. Great Thank to get, you. Great to get the explanation of the big idea. We'll be unpacking this all day today till 9 o'clock at night. Stay, stay here on SiliconAngle.tv in collaboration with IBM. This is their community event here, the IBM Apache Spark. Spark Insights. Go to crowdchat.net slash Spark Summit and use the hashtag uh, Spark Insight. We'll follow the conversation. Join the conversation. We'll be right back with more after this short break. Live in San Francisco for the IBM community event.